Hi, everyone. I'm former Republican State Senator Phil Harriman, and my colleague, as always, and friend, Ethan Strimling, former Democratic State Senator. We're, uh, it's a wee hours of the morning, but we mm. do know this. Uh, Governor Paula Page uh, was reelected to a second term and was uh, able to garner more votes than his first election. What do we take from this? Yeah, look, I mean, you just got to step back at first and say congratulations. Ran a really remarkable campaign, very disciplined. Um, when all the votes are counted in this, I think he's going to get more votes than anybody expected him to. The most votes of a Republican um, getting elected in the state of Maine in what we think is probably 40 years. So you got to give him some credit, some kudos. The guy really focused on what he wanted to get done, and uh, he's going to be going to the Blaine House for a second term. And, you know, what's really s astonishing to me is the opponents to Paul LePage spent $10 million, supporters of Paul LePage spent $6 million, Elliot Cutler uh, sent mixed messages towards the end of the campaign, Angus King dropped his support for Elliot Cutler, put it all behind Mike Mishu to uh, get behind that effort, and what it told me is that most people weren't really undecided as to who they were mm -hmm. going to vote for, and clearly uh, their decision was baked in probably a week or more ago, and all of this last-minute campaigning and rhetoric really it was good for pundits. It was great for us. We had a great time <laughs> yeah. talking about it. But. Oh, they were thinking of us. In <laughs> yeah, exactly. Our future. I so mean, we, you know, we, we could dissect forever how we got to this moment. Mm -hmm. I, I think you agree. You know, LePage, look, he earned it. He got it. Now he's got to go forward. That's now he's got a legislature right. he's got to work with. I think this is what's going to be really interesting. I, you know, clearly a leopard doesn't change its spots, so I don't think we're going to see a whole new governor. We're going to see the same person, but I certainly hope that we can find a way. And it also looks like the legislative majorities are a lot tighter. It looks like the Senate may have gone Republican. Uh, how is he going to work with the legislature a little better? Because we've got to find a way to not have 200 vetoes again in his second term. Yeah. That just is not a productive way to govern. Well, I think I think the governor uh, has gained experience from his legislative, had the Republicans, then he had the Democrats, now he's got potentially the Republicans again. He's got to use that experience to his advantage because he's only got four years to build a lasting legacy. Incoming legislators, which appears to be uh, you know, an abundance of new legislators, need to understand how the system works and parliamentary procedure and all of those fundamentals. But more importantly, I think the legislator needs to put together a coalition that understands they have to work with the governor. The governor needs to do the same so that many people see some tangible results from this election. But the most important thing is that we have to realize that, you know, through this thing, I've got a little egg on my face, and I think oh. I owe you a buck, uh, my friend, because uh, I'm not giving you the five. I'm not, oh, there it is, right there. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure. I don't even have to go back and calculate. You wiped my you butt on this election, my you friend. You saw it right Ouch. here on video. Oh, that hurts. You're a good man. <laughs> you too, brother. <laughs> this is going on my wall. <laughs>